Bye. Short bus debate club. It's a bus rolling. I can get on board. <laughs> Hello, I'm Darren Jolly. <laughs> it's time to get this short bus started. So let's roll and on with the show. By the way, that was the doors opening on the short bus. You should totally like quit whatever job you have right now and just become a sound effects <laughs> just guy. Just do dude. sound effects like that guy from Police Academy. Um, no, dude, he was fucking awesome, dude. That guy from Police Academy. And that's the only gig that he had was the Police Academy gig. Yeah, Academy pretty one, much. Two, All three, of them. Four, 14, 82. Yeah. Sorry. So, so you heard Darren, um, and I'm Brian, and we are the Short Bus Debate Club. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to quit my job to uh, do sound effects professionally. but or, or even do the debate club at this point in time. No, um, because this would be one of those things where, well, we'd be fucking homeless trying to bum Wi-Fi from McDonald's if... Uh, if we were to do that, we'd be like those old motherfuckers in Times Square before they did the urban development and they put the fucking milk milk uh, things and stand up on top of it and deliver their fucking. The world is fucked up, and this is why it's fucked up. And you're all part of that fucked up world, which means you're fucked up. You know, in Vegas, they've got those where people can do that kind of shit, except they have circles painted, and I don't know if you have to pay for that circle, but. On, uh, what is it, Fremont Street yeah, or wherever? Downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so downtown underneath the light show, they've got circles painted all over the place and people just stand in those circles. And like, so one time there was one of those dudes that was just the statue that, I, you know, when I'm walking by, because they, they move them around kind of like they do blackjack dealers. Um, but the statue was there. One time there was just a naked chick. Um, did you have to sign up to it to do it, or I don't know how you get in the circle because you're literally saying it like almost like dealers. There's a rotation, right? Yeah, well, they and the, yeah, they the moved them around over that circle. So I don't know how it worked or how much they had to pay to do it or if it was just a licensing thing or what. But there was a juggler in one. I'm fairly certain that I might get four to five people listening to me down there, much like we have. You know, we we would rather. We've got a lot of reach, though. We've got listeners in Russia. Latvia, Latvia is yeah. huge. Yeah. Yo, eleven. We Hello, Latvia. 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 <laughs> Europe, Australia. We're global, folks. <laughs> We're global. And you know what should happen over the course of this evening tonight? We should break the thousand download mark if we're lucky. Yeah, we if, we should. If the people in Maryland and Virginia are, if their ears are perking up at all. And, and I'm sure they are, um, at least two of them. So now that we kind of introduced ourselves and circles in Vegas and, and all of that stuff, um, we're doing safety today and, and the illusion of safety. So here in America, at least, I don't know about you people in Latvia or Russia, Italy, Spain. Australia. I don't know if you kind of have the same issues, but here, um, I don't know. Everybody wants to be safe all the time. Like I think if, if mothers could, they would fucking wrap their kids up in like saran wrap and bubble wrap and then, you know, put more padding on them to where they're just this huge ball of Bubble wrap and, Kev and Kevlar or something like Kevlar, that. Kevlar, <laughs> and then they can get shot, they can get hit by cars, they can fall down a mountain, and probably nothing will happen to them. But that's kind of what we're going to talk about because there is no guarantee. So, you know, that friend of ours that said, fuck you, quit telling me to be safe. There is no being safe when you're you're going into this situation. The fact is... You know, you can take certain precautions to make yourself more or less safe, but there's there's no guarantee that 
you're going to be safe. And actually, what we're going to kind of talk about here um, is the fact that a lot of the precautions that our government is making us take or corporate America is making us take, they don't actually make us safer. Uh, in a lot of the cases, they put us in more danger than we would be if those steps and, and precautions weren't there. Um, so let, let me real quick give you the definition of safety. And this is from Merriam-Webster. Um, and then I'll let Darren talk for a little bit because I know between us babbling about fucking circles and stuff and whatever, I've been talking for a while. So safety is the condition of being safe from undergoing or causing hurt, injury, or loss. Okay, so I guess that means, you know, you're safe from being burgled. You're safe from being mugged. You're safe from being shot. You're just safe. Um, are, are we kind of on the right track now that we started off that way, Darren, yeah. or did I do something wrong? No, no, yeah, well, I mean, generally speaking, every time you open your mouth, all you're essentially doing is changing feet. So on some level, you're <laughs> always kind of doing something wrong. But, I mean, when we were when we were talking about it, leading up to it, and because I assigned it to Thomas Jefferson, but I was wrong, you know, it, it was Ben Franklin that said it, but uh, um, those who would give up essential liberty uh, to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither uh, liberty nor safety. So, can I, can I say something real quick course, just yeah, on yeah, that? Please. Because, yeah. so, I, I love that quote, and I've been using that quote for probably 25 years. Um, there's a guy named Benjamin Witts at the Brookings Institution. And he said that everyone that has been using that quote has been using it out of context. And I suppose he's kind of right, but not entirely. So the reason he says that is because the quote is pulled from a letter that Ben Franklin was writing to the general. Oh, no, he was writing it to the Pens. Okay, so the Pens were the family that founded the state of Pennsylvania. And he was writing that letter to the Pens because the Pens didn't want to pay tax to help pay for the French and Indian War. Um, and they needed to buy guns and, and, you know, feed the soldiers and all of that stuff. So... The Pens were arguing with the assembly because they didn't want to pay taxes. They just set, offered a lump sum, and Ben Franklin was saying, hey, fuck you, you need to pay. Um, so he was saying that because they needed guns, and, and they were trying to actually purchase probably liberty and safety, okay. depending on how you look at it. But just because they were talking about it that way in that time doesn't mean that it doesn't apply now. I mean, putting up cameras and, you know, posting cops and, and doing all of this stuff in my mind, it still applies. So I think that Benjamin Wittes or Wits from the Brookings institution, um, is probably talking out of his ass. He just wanted to get a paper published. Well, the, the 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 spot where I found it, this guy Robert Siegel, he's doing the same thing, and this was something off NPR that was done. Oh yeah, that's the interview with with Ben Wittes. Oh, that is yeah, it? okay, yeah, okay. But no matter what, like to make an argument that a person is taking a quote out of context that that, that where the quote came. When it, when, it, when it was in 17... 1755. Yeah, a long fucking time ago. November like, something. I'm pretty sure that every time a person utters some, you know, they issue, they issue an utterance, they don't know the exact context of where maybe said utterance like came from in the first place. And quotes, because they're like verbal art on some level. Like, I remember I used to fight with you about this because you'd get really irritated about the way that people responded to your book. But I think that when you create something and you put it out in the middle of the universe when you say something that's artful and thoughtful at that point it becomes subject to you know the interpreters uh, how they want to use it and 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 their and their interpretation and there's no doubt that 
when you make a con comment about security and uh, freedom or liberty in a, in a current context, it's just not going to be the same thing as what was going on some 270 fucking years ago. So right. to make that other argument is just fucking asinine in the first place. But having said that, fear has been a tactic that has been utilized as a way of motiv motivating people to not be thoughtful all over the place in every political space, like every political individual that, that, that is like they're right now, if you're, if you look at the Republicans, they're using crime, you know, uh, again, you know, so you gotta be scared. The Democrats don't know how to deal with crime, you know, crime, 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 or they also, uh, they've been using all these, uh, liberals want, uh, to, to give your kids, uh, medicine so that your son can become a woman you know there's some really really goofy <laughs> fucking uh um uh advertisements that have been put on uh it, it particularly in battleground locations you know not not so but where people are vulnerable we have uh, adults uh you know mothers that are sitting at home raising their children that might be persuadable by this kind of thing but no matter what uh throughout the entire pandemic you know you can say the same thing about liberals i mean so uh, in terms of whether it's mass mandates or you know you gotta wash every surface and you know clean you know you gotta have the alcohol this and that and blah blah blah, blah. and if you're not then uh, you know then you're 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 killing people you know i mean and that that was like the rhetorical disposition that was actually being uh advanced and while we all know there was something happening and that, that covid 19 was something that was very real a lot of the rhetorical dispositions that were being pressed by uh, Dr. You know Anthony Fauci and other aspects of the uh, the liberal media, um, yeah, we're going to get a big check mark on us for this one on all sides that we uh, because you're not even allowed to talk about uh, uh, anything with regards to COVID-19 without saying everybody wear a mask. You know, I mean that's I, that, if that's a fact, you know, then what is it about this this idea of fear and safety? And, you know, like trying to countervail freedom that that so uh, motivates what we do, what we think, how we how we function socially. Well, and dude, some of them are just so fucking stupid. So, again, I, I understand that certain precautions can be or need to be taken. You know, maybe the mask, maybe the vaccines were a good idea. You know, you and I were discussing it and, and we kind of thought maybe the government and and Johnson and Johnson and and these other companies Pfizer and Moderna, uh, Moderna you know they're just kind of in it for the money because you and this other guy I know were vaccinated wore masks all the time and ended up getting fucking covid twice so how effective is the vaccine and how effective is masking, for that matter? I mean... Especially when the rhetorical disposition at the beginning, right? And look, you know, I'm not going to make a bunch of apologies. We need to be clear thinking. We need to be honest with ourselves. But what was suggested when the vaccine was being rolled out was that if you got vaccinated, you would not get COVID. This right. is what was being stated. This is what was being suggested. In spite of the fact that they knew that the technologies that they were using for this type of, va of, of vaccine had not been uh, sufficiently tested and particularly not tested in this context for, for middle and long-term consequences. So you say one thing and then your narrative starts to shift as what it is that you're saying. Uh, like even, even, even when everybody, like when Biden became president, right? Um, they, there was this whole thing about the pandemic of the unvaccinated. And they were talking about how the, the percentage of people that were dying were, uh, to a significant number, uh, not vaccinated people. But what they were, of course, not saying is, is that to an almost 100% position, these were really old people that were already in really fucking bad shape anyway. Or just people that were in bad shape Period. anyway. Yeah. Somebody that had, you know, emphysema to begin with. Um, yeah. Comorbidities. That became a big word, word during the, the, the pandemic. So it, it's, diabetes. It's completely out of control. And again, I I do understand precautions. You know, I mean, when I leave the house, I lock the door. Um, generally, you know, when I'm at home, well, 
now that I'm here, it's it's a little bit different. But when I'm at home elsewhere in my other houses, when I was home, I didn't lock the door. I mean, I locked the door when I went to bed, but I didn't lock it when I was there because I figured if somebody comes in and they're not supposed to be there, they're going to know right away that they're not supposed to be there. Do you, I just, I just, do you wear a seatbelt or not? I remember when we were younger, this was a gigantic uh, position. No, I still don't. Um, because, again, so all we're doing when we take these precautions, and I do understand that, that seatbelts do save lives, but they can also, you know, fuck you up, too. I mean, but I, I don't wear it just because I don't like them. They're uncomfortable. I, I don't. I wear my seatbelt personally. I don't. I don't see but the I benefit. Choose, I choose to wear my seatbelt, which is maybe the the point that you're uh, one of the points that you're alluding to. Yeah, I, is that again? So government mandates on these things, and and this is another one where the government and the insurance companies decided that it was more cost effective for the insurance companies if people wore seat belts. Um, so that's where, you know, mandatory seat belt laws being, come. That's because people's lives were being saved and they were being hurt less. The, the, the physical injury was less because of the seat belts, presumably. That was the argument. I don't have enough data to say one way or the other. I mean, I don't either. I'm going to guess that it does actually save people. I lives. know that mandatory helmet laws, but again, I'm the guy that thinks I should be able to choose what it is. If I get in a car accident and I die, why the fuck should the state care one way or the other? I, uh, when I used to live at 38th and J back in that time period, it, I was because I'd always take the bus when I was work, when I was going down to, uh, to to the campus, and uh, this fucking uh, car took a left turn in front of a motorcycle. And the motorcycle guy went over the top of it. He broke both of his fucking legs. Uh, he's he's hollering at me because I, I was smoking a cigarette. He's just, come on, please come over here. And they had already gotten him over to where he was on the side of the road. And he said, could you give me a cigarette? I, I was like, I'll give you three, bro. You know, your, your legs are fucking broken. Uh -huh. But I only bring it up because uh, in this instance, uh, when he broke both of his legs, when he flew over the top of this car, he managed to not hit his head, which was not protected on the ground. Because he was not wearing a helmet in that moment. So. Right. But see, again, um, why why does the state care whether or not I live or, or die? I understand people I know, you know, oh, please wear a helmet. Please don't ride your motorcycle. Please wear your safety belt, whatever. But it's just, again, it's just a precaution. There's no guarantee that I'm not going to die anyway. I, the, the, the difference between... Safety belts and and helmets, though, and the shit that they did under COVID was obnoxious because I think that they really have done, honest to goodness, like some good work with regards to the science on those other two. The shit that they did with regards to COVID was one falsehood after another falsehood. I mean, I don't like Rand Paul, but he would sit there and he would just beat the fucking shit out of Fauci in front of the in front of the Senate because because he'd say herd immunity. Uh, will, will be effective once 50% of the population has vaccines. And then he would say herd immunity will occur once we've got 65%, 75%. You're saying herd, herd, right? Herd. H-E-R-D. Yeah, H -E -R -D. yeah herd, like, herd immunity. Okay. So saying that it would disappear because enough people were no longer capable of getting, because they kept per offering this, the, the, their, the presupposition was that people that had the vaccine would not get COVID anymore, which was, as we all know, not only incorrect, but that herd immunity never even, we, we, that we don't even, like herd immunity as a concept does not even exist in the form that we thought, or that it was rhetorically being posited to us by the scientific, the, and when I say scientific, I am using the scare quotes around it because it, like, these guys are not acting like real scientists. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. I mean, I... <laughs> The COVID thing, I think, is horseshit, and I don't. But I don't know if they actually put anyone in more or less danger. I think they just made everybody feel safe. 
So it's just just purely for catharsis. Well, I don't know. I mean, because people were still dying. Um, you know, we heard all the stories about New York and and Italy Italy, was overrun and all of this shit. Um, but again, people were getting vaccinated and they were still getting sick. So, and, and and the vaccines were rushed. So, you know, the science maybe wasn't fully there because they didn't have, you know, the right amount of time to do it. I'm not, I'm not thrashing on the doctors that, that did it. I'm talking shit about all of the assholes that did all of the things up to and, and after. Um, Cause I don't know if it actually did any good. All I know is that it fucked up my income horribly, dude. A lot of people's income people. I mean, people lost their jobs. People, I'm sure we're going to find out that people like, honestly, like if you had, if you had four kids and you were a single mother, and you were working, and you had to basically work only from the time that your kids were at school to where they came home, and then all of a sudden you were being expected to be not Uh-oh. only the chief breadwinner, but taking care of your kids while schooling. Well, I mean, what what fucking kind of bo- that was? I mean, and of course, stuff that we just don't we don't talk about that. Well, so I I want to give some other examples because I know that like. If, if we do have six listeners, probably three of them are on the side of the politicians and three of them are on the side of those fucking retard anti-vaccine people. Um, maybe not. I don't think any of our listeners are completely fucking retarded. But you are all on the short bus with us. So <laughs> That's correct. On, on some level, you're at least nominally retarded. So... And not politically correct, which we appreciate. So I want to give at least one example, but I'm probably going to give more. Um, so this is corporate America, and this is corporate America trying to keep the employees and customers safe. So back when I was 21, so it's it's been over 20 fucking years, but I worked for a casino, and back then I still partied pretty hard and I did a no call, no show one day. Um, so they let me go. Well, I can't remember if it was later that day or the next day I went in to gamble at the casino. I was going to go play blackjack and the manager stopped me and said, you can't come in here. And I was like, why? And he goes, because we, we fired you because you did a no call, no show. And I was like, yeah, I know, but I'm coming to gamble. He goes, no, you're not allowed in here for 48 hours. It's a cooling off period to make sure that you don't hurt anybody here. Management, you know, the employees or any of the customers. And I said, that is the stupidest fucking rule I have ever heard in my life. You do know that if I wanted to hurt anybody here, that your stupid rule wouldn't stop me, that I would just come in and hurt people. And he goes, well, that doesn't matter. Um, the rule is the rule. So you can't come in here and gamble. Well, there are other rules like that throughout corporate America where they're just putting it on paper for insurance purposes. Insurance purposes almost always. Yes. Um, and they're not actually protecting anyone. Another one that drives me fucking nuts is that if you're in I suppose any type of building, but let's call it a multi-story building for the time being. Um, If there's an active threat, they lock down the building and they lock down each floor. So essentially what they're doing is trapping the gunman or knife-wielding freak or whatever that person happens to be in... One of those floors with all of those people. Now, you could say that that was for the greater good because he can't wander from floor to floor or she. Um, But that means that that one floor is entirely fucked. So depending on what kind of threat it is, um, they're they're locked in with that person. Well, that's, I mean, and 
I don't want to get, I, I don't want to talk about this extensive because it's it like in, in a real practical way, that's what happened in Uvalde with those kids in that room. And all of those fucking kids in that room got fucking killed because of the way that they they sealed that shit off, dude. Well, and that's, I mean, that's the problem. That was what I was going to say, too, is that here, so I don't know about other school districts. I'm guessing it's a nationwide thing. But here in the the Denver metro area and probably Colorado as a whole, if there's an active threat at one school, then the entire school district and sometimes surrounding schools or surrounding districts get locked down. Well, again, all you're doing is trapping that person inside the school. So it wasn't like the person was planning on jumping from school to school. It's very odd. Yeah, it doesn't get yeah. I mean, but, but like that picture in the person's head, the, the mother's head. You know, because they, they're being irrational in that, or father, whatever, they're being irrational in that, more, non gender non-binary, they're being irrational in that moment because they're afraid. Gender fluid demisexual? Yes, exactly. <laughs> they're afraid because of what's uh, uh, going on with their, with their kid or kid by association. But in that moment, like, people want an act, but the act is only something, it doesn't matter whether it really demonstrates anything that would like prevent or help pre prevent harm or help the situation become right uh, what they all but what they should do is try to figure out a way to keep them out of the school yeah but you, you you but your point as opposed to locking them in your bigger point is generally speaking that when we deal with these questions socially right now we are not dealing with them in a way that is actually constructive we deal with them in a way that makes it look like we're trying to approach the question, but we're not really approaching the question in any meaningful way at all. Right. It's completely fucking irrational. Yes. And I got into argument after argument after argument with the ex because she thought it protected the kid. Yeah. I mean, you could have a, you could have a school that's literally 17 miles away and it's not, nothing's going to happen to them or you've essentially locked the assailant inside of a space so they just fucking open up right. like they did in Uvalde. You know, I mean, this is just, uh, again, like I would not have been so hard on the COVID crowd that was coming, trying to deal with the, what was happening in the pandemic from one moment to the next. If they were honest about it, you know, if they, if they, 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 they said, well, maybe what we thought here wasn't exactly correct. We're trying to get, to the bottom of this, you know, like I said, the, the herd immunity stuff, like if you're saying 50, 50% obviously didn't work, you know, so let's just try to get the number a little bit higher and see if we can't bring these numbers down. If you do it from a, a, a position of uh, humility and because science is, science is supposed to be about testing and then being able to come back and retest under the same circumstances or using other circumstances to see how that affects, you know, I mean, the whole point is about going through a process of gaining knowledge through these testing spaces. I think they call it the scientific method. method. Yeah. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that's correct. But like, I, again, like when I, I, I like Rand Paul, he's a total fucking douchebag, but he was so right in the way that when he was, he was talking to, to, to Fauci about 98% of what he's talking about, particularly this stuff with regards to uh, um, gain of function like that, like that's like, you play game with games with words, and then you say you assign it to a different category. No, no, this is fucking stupid, you know. But that's from the beginning to the ending of what's gone on thus far. Like there hasn't been any on it. There's been very little honest scientific activity done, uh, at least in the public's eye, that the state is endorsing. Right? There, there's stuff that's out there, but you got to look for it on your own, and you got to go through these spaces. And if you post anything about it on social media, there's going to be this tagline that's going to come beneath whatever it is that you say that says COVID-19 is a real thing, blah, 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 blah. You know, I mean, it's, it, everything comes with a disclaimer. Again, why do you put disclaimers on things? You do it for insurance purposes. You're not even really doing it because you care about anybody's safety or health or their well-being. You're doing it because you don't want somebody who's affiliated with you to get fucking sued because you maintain the platform that's putting the information out in the first place. Right.
yada yada yada. yada. No, I I got gotcha. you. I mean, you and I talked about it in in great detail prior to the show. I mean, and I still don't understand why they were trying to mix, basically create a new similar disease to COVID-19 because they're testing it with this and they're mixing it with that to see which is going to attach to the human. Mm -hmm. Um, We already knew COVID-19 attached to the human, so why not go backwards with it and do it that way? I, I think that you're getting into a dangerous space here. I think that the science is way more complicated than that. Well, I I don't know. I mean, I know, again, it's a different thing, but I know you can reverse engineer a computer virus, and if you've got all of the, the same markers and stuff, and I know a computer virus and an actual virus are different, but you should be able to look at it the same way and say, oh, well, fuck, here's what it is. It's pig shit or Pig saliva, that's how it ended up attaching, because yeah. somebody yeah. ate pork or when, whatever. When, when either you or I spent enough time in a lab to actually know whether or not that statement means anything, I, 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 I will I will commit either to it in the affirmative or negative a little bit more substantially, but I don't I don't really know what, what's true or what's not true, what's not, what isn't true when it comes to the actual hard science with regards to what they're doing in those places. Well, so we've, we've spoken a lot about COVID and, and this entire thing was really just about safety and the fact that, you know, we're not ever truly safe. So, you know, we've got crime, we've got disease, we've got all of this different shit. And I think if it were up to the government, if they could figure out a way to still collect taxes and make everybody go to work, then they would just put everybody in their own little box that was like bulletproof and disease proof and everything else. Again, as long as they could still collect their taxes. Um, Because really the way things are going, I mean, but then again, that's not entirely true because a lot of the things they do, put more people in danger. Um, You know, when you're at whatever function and because of the screening process, you know, whether that be metal detectors or wands or whatever, when the lines grow so long that because it's, taking so long to get inside wherever you're trying to get in when those lines grow so long the metal detectors that were there as a precaution to stop somebody from you know bringing in a gun or whatever well why wouldn't you just and i am not condoning this at all i do not want any of our six listeners to do this but why wouldn't somebody just stand outside and fucking shoot everybody that's in line That. I mean, we talked about that before. I mean, of course, of course, I I, I get your point. I mean, the, the 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 bigger point is is that the the royal they want us to be docile and productive, right? I mean, that's that's why if you if I mean if it takes during a certain moment making people fearful, you know, as a way of keeping us docile and productive, then that you know, because obviously, like if there's nothing that if there's something that we haven't made clear, it's that. We, we believe in democracy, but we're skeptical of the, the way that democracy functions. We, we, we believe in people working together and sort of like solving problems together. But right now, the way that we're going about that, you know, there's a reason why you, you know, make arguments about, you know, feeling like maybe there's a need for culling of the herd because we don't know how to negotiate these social questions writ large with the number of people that we have. Well, it's just all so fake and phony and it doesn't actually fucking do anything. Uh So imagine, you know, a kid who's at the top of a mountain and you want to protect him. So you give him a fucking life preserver and say there, now you're safe. (laughs) 
you know, or a fucking <laughs> a life jacket. <laughs> there you go, kid. Well, that's not going to help against falling down the mountain or a rock slide but, or. But as I mean, the, 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 again, like this is about appearances. You know, this isn't about anything that's essential to the concepts of liberty or safety. You know, I mean, we're 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 doing a dance. We're playing a game. You know, we're 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 we like some people in their minds suggests that even though this this well this is better than anything else that's ever existed before okay so you can make that argument or you can come and say uh if we keep working at it then incrementally we'll get a little bit closer and a little bit closer well both of these things just seem incredibly absurd to me like we're not making any headway we're even even if on some level this is better than anything else the, the the more that we continue to go through the obnoxiousness of it, the more I'm just not even sure that it's desire, desirable to, sal to try to salvage it in its uh, present present form. I was listening to something earlier today when I was going over stuff uh, for you know the the fears the fear factor that we're negotiating here, minus Joe Rogan, right? And uh, no dare penis for you. <laughs> I uh, I ran into this thing uh, where uh, one of my least favorite uh, political commentators, Bill Maher, was talking about uh, what would happen because Trump is uh, has foreshadowed his intention to uh, announce over the course of the next week or two. Like it's it just seems like uh, there are all these things that have been put in place for him to announce, right? So. Republicans are going to crush on the midterm this time. If they don't, it'll be surpri surprise. surprising. Yeah. yeah. If the Republicans crush, this is the point that he made. If the Republicans crush like it looks like is going to happen and he wins the nomination and ultimately, regardless of what happens, is standing uh, down there on Inauguration Day, regardless of what happens during the election after they maintain control after Republicans maintain control of both houses of Congress, which may or may not happen. But if I was a betting man, I would take the, uh, the yes on the R side in both houses. Every day Cause again, it's on only, Tuesday. it's only five seats and it's, it's, it's just gonna, it's just gonna happen. And most of the dipshits that are running are, they say they're not Republican, but like that libertarian guy, you know, that's running for Senate here. Uh -huh. He said that he was against abortion. You know, that is not a fucking libertarian check mark. Uh -huh. um, I think he, he just said a lot of shit that was Republican rhetoric. Yeah. I mean, so anyway, I didn't you, mean you to get, interrupt. You get, the, you get the point that I'm making, though, is yeah. that after, after what happened, uh, what didn't happen on January 6th, the stage could very easily be set for something very different come come the 2024 election. And, uh, I mean, if that's the case, that's a real fear. That's not a fear that anybody else, in, you know, as much as I have zero disrespect for Bill Maher, I respect him for saying that because that's something that's very, very possible. And if that if that happens, then, you know, even though like clearly in 2000, when uh, when Bush getting the win because of the hanging chads, which made it, you know, or whatever happened in 1963 when they popped a cap in old boy's ass. Like we've had some big questions about whether or not democracy still exists in any form in the United States for a very long time. But this this could be a this could be a very real nail in the coffin, you know. And I mean, then all the things that we were having pushed down our throats as fears uh, to try to keep us docile and productive have essentially not only made us docile and productive; it's made us incapable of dealing with things that are complicated. And uh, if we're incapable of dealing with things that are complicated, then there will be a culling of the herd, but not in the way that anybody here wants to, to hear it or feel it or see it. Well, you know, I, I was thinking about it, and I know that, yes, that is a, a genuine fear, but not in the same way that, that we were talking about where we're trying to make everybody 
you know, be scared so that we can take control of them, um, or, or control them better. Um, but you know, and I know I'm sidetracking a little bit, but all of these cameras that are now everywhere, you know, the UK was number one globally for like CCTV because they had like one camera for every 10 residents in the UK. Okay. Um, What's but CC? Oh, closed circuit. Okay. I'm sorry. So I think that we're, we're jumping up real close to that kind of number and, you know, maybe just maybe because I, I've never believed that the United States of America wants to protect us. We're expendable as far as they're concerned. And really all we are is a revenue generating robot, basically. Yeah, less than um, we're, essentially, we're essentially products. So, we're, and that's, we're, that's we're what I was getting at is that all of these cameras that are making people feel safe, I think are actually just a way for them to find a crime and not to protect the person whom the crime is against, but just to find a crime so that they can throw somebody in jail for an incredibly long term so that that privatized prison or the privatized probation service or whatever can start generating a different revenue stream. And I know that sounds cynical. It was. But it's also fairly realistic as far as I'm concerned. Well, it's important to understand it in the context of irony that it presents, that it's not there to make you be safer. It's there to actually to create degrees of insecurity that are even like, cause you don't realize that this is the state like becoming this, the state corporate position becoming a, like a superpower position. Well, for me, it creates insecurity. For everybody else, it's like some sort of soft blanket. That's what, that when I said I was being I know, sarcastic. I mean, uh, ironic. Yeah. That, I was. That was. That was the point. Have you ever seen? Did you ever see the movie End of Violence? Yeah, that's a great fucking. It was a, flight. It was a great fuck. Yeah, but like because he's sitting in that room and all those fucking TVs, and he can see. And this is this is before, way before any of the stuff that you have right now, where you have a camera at every fucking corner. But uh, it was like a Scarface wall. Of cameras or of monitors, because mm -hmm. he was a mafia guy, Irish mob. If it's the same movie I'm thinking uh, yeah, about, he worked for the state in End of Violence, and then he ends up getting killed by that Latina. I'm thinking of a different yeah. violence. Okay, it's got to be different. Yeah, because this literally is like this guy who the idea is that he can see everything through these closed circuit TVs, but it's way it's like in the nineties. Well, so since you, you started talking about movies, there's a movie, and I think that this is what people actually want. I don't think the government wants it, although it could be tied to corporations. So there's a movie called Surrogates. Um, it's got Ving Rhames in it. It's got uh, Bruce Willis. And basically, everybody is so scared of everything, disease, crime, their neighbor, whatever. Uh, having any sort of social interaction um, and robotics cybernetics have gotten so big that they basically buy a robot that looks like them and they sit in a fucking chair all day long and control the robot. They don't go outside. Um, and I think that a lot of people wouldn't mind doing something like that because they are scared of everything and they, they shouldn't be. I mean, you're going to die regardless. And even if, because the surrogates, you know, they're in their chair, they think they're completely safe. Well, somebody develops a weapon that when they shoot the fucking robot, it blows out the circuit of the robot, but then it blows, it liquefies your brain when you're back in your chair. So we're all going to die. There's no point in not doing something because you're scared. Just do it. And quit trying to be safe all the time because there's no such thing. 
surrogates. It already exists. <laughs> they just have it through avatars in a digital space right now. Well, there's another movie that does that too. Um, it was kind of funny in that surrogates movie because, and again, you know, they're they're robots, but they're on the dance floor, and this guy thinks he's dancing with some hot blonde, and they both get their brains liquefied and their their circuits blown, and when Bruce Willis's robot goes to investigate, he goes to the what he thought was the blonde's house, and it was just this big fucking fat dude. Um, that was controlling the the blonde. So <laughs> yeah, you can have a different kind of sur- surrogate. Then. Yeah, apparently you didn't have to buy the one that that looked exactly like you, but most people did. Um. So yeah, I know we talked about a lot of different shit. Um, and I know some of it was sort of. A, circular and and going off in a direction that maybe didn't make a lot of sense to you guys but basically just if you're worried about something maybe look into it a little bit more um if if you're worried about your kids getting fucking shot then you know maybe talk to the superintendent of schools and tell them not to lock your kid in with the gunman um little things like that Surrogates. <laughs> you should uh, watch End of Violence at some point in time, though. What fucking show am I thinking of? It really is that the, the closed circuit position, like way before it happened, and yeah, I, I, I will. It's, 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 it's just, uh, it's worth a watch. I mean, especially in a world where, yeah, these, these hyper desires to. Um, to give up every ounce of privacy and because you think somehow or another that maybe if something happens to you, then they'll, they'll be able to catch the assailant, you know, whatever, whatever the weird little, again, like that, that kind of goes back to the idea that, that Brian was talking about to where uh, maybe the fantasy that you have of the, the thing that you think that provides security for you, uh, maybe it doesn't it doesn't really provide you any security maybe the function that it fills is something that's quite a bit different quite a bit more um insidious yeah i, I don't so the movie i was thinking of was history of violence not end of violence yeah, that's just that Viggo mortensen that's a different uh, that was a good movie though too but a very different movie indeed um I, I don't know. I've got a lot to say about the, the safety thing, um, but a lot of it would just be repeating myself over and over, I'm trying to drive a point home. Um, He's been arguing about the seatbelt thing since we were about, since he was 16, I think, <laughs> really, which is, I met him right about the time he turned 16. Well, that, a lot of it is choice. You know, just the fact that I don't want the government telling me that I have to do whatever. Um, but some of the other stuff is is genuinely concerning. And I don't know if it is because it's for some sort of idea of the greater good. Like, okay, so it's fine for somebody to mow down everybody that's waiting in line. Or it's fine for somebody to mow down an entire floor of a building, but they didn't get to everybody on the ins or on the other side of the line, on the other side of the metal detectors. They didn't get to everybody on the other floors. Um, I don't know if, because again, I find that in the government's eyes we're expendable, so I don't think it's for the actual greater good unless there's some sort of financial benefit to it in some way, like fewer lawsuits or the people on the other side of the metal detector are more important than the ones that are waiting in line or whatever. And and I don't know the answer. I mean, you got an idea? Well, if a per- I mean, I think that the point that you're, you're bringing up there is like, 
it's it's to if if a certain system that you're uh, incorporated into offers a solution for you, like and we talked about COVID a bunch, but and as I say this, I I will tell you I I wore a mask. I will probably wear a mask during winter time. Uh, this year. It's not going to be because anybody tells me. It's going to be because I work in a building with a hundred other people uh, because uh, I put my hands all over my fucking face all the time and when I'm at work and I'm picking up boxes, you know, that are that people are sending or letters or any number of mail pieces, if I keep putting my hands on my face then I'm, 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 I'm going to get myself sick. So if I put that mask on, it lessens the ability of me to continue to put my dirty ass fucking hands on my face. All right. So that's, that's a practical thing. And it's not anybody fucking telling me to do that. And, and in that context, uh, in 2016, I went to China, 2017, I went to Taiwan. When I went there, it was during, uh, winter and one winter for both, for both of them, actually. And um, it was just a couple months right after the Chinese New Year in both instances. Well, one, we were there for the Chinese New Year and the other one we were there for right right before it. But uh, ultimately, um, people were in masks all over the place. Like we're in Shanghai and like I just I was like, what are these fucking people wearing masks for? And somebody said to me, well, after, you know, the bird flu and SARS and all that kind of stuff, uh, because space is such a premium here. And we're also close to one another. People wear masks a lot just to kind of try to stay healthy. Not because the state told them to do it in China or in Taiwan, right? But the point is, that was something that was being presented to me beforehand that these people were making choices of with regards to themselves inside of these societies, which is the way that I think that Brian and I agree should should happen. The problem comes in when the state comes and says, Everybody needs to wear a mask because if you're not wearing a mask inside, then you're a danger to everybody else that you're around. And then you have all these, I've never used this term before because I think it's the stupidest term ever, but you have all these Karens that yell at somebody who's not wearing a mask if they don't abide by the the rhetoric that's being put out by the state or by the corporations or by the existing systems of power. Um, I actually, because I worked at the post office and I worked on the window, on more than one occasion, uh, when somebody would come in without a mask, someone would chastise me or my coworkers for not uh, being the policemen of the the masks. And I said, I said it's not our right or our responsibility to do that. Uh, they uh, the the mask mandates have been put put out, but there is not a legal position. I said the ACLU has come out and said this very clearly that there's no legal position with regards to this. You don't have the right to tell them anymore that I don't have the right to tell them, even though I work for the government. This this conversation happened more 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 than once inside of those buildings, um, and that's the way that it makes more sense to me. But to say that when you don't have scientific grounds, again, because like what science? Science is supposed to be this testability. It's not go tell every motherfucker to wear a mask, and everybody has to fucking wear a mask from here to eternity. If a person's telling you, if, if a system of power is telling you, again, this is to, to bring it back to what Brian was saying, if they're telling you that this thing provides safety, we, we should be thinking critically about that. We should be testing it. And if we demonstrate that it's not factual, then we should grow and move forward. We shouldn't continue to subjugate ourselves to these spaces because we're afraid. There's lots of things. I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you on a little secret. There's going to be more things in your life that you don't know than you do. So don't be afraid of the things that you don't know. Just do the best you can, get the information that you can, and certainly don't allow a system in a position of power to use your ignorance as a way of manipulating you into fear. You you have to be, you're going to be here. No matter what, at the end of the day, you're still going to be having to face whatever it is that you were having to face that morning. So COVID's still here. But, you know, for those of us that have tried to learn and to grow, we're going to we're going to be better off for, 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 for some of it. But again, there's going to be something else around the corner. And just when the solution is presented to you by the institutions, make sure that you have your, your head on straight, your, 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 your brain on. Don't 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 succumb to fear dispositions like be. Try to be smarter than that. Use your fucking brain.
<laughs> All right, bitch, get off the bus because we're at the end of the hour. So that was our closing thought. Use your fucking brain. Um, future episodes this week include pandemic apocalypse movies. Is that what you would call it? I yeah. mean, we're talking yeah, about ap- ap- apocalyptic films. Yeah, pandemic films. Yeah, things that would wipe out the the human race and shit like that. And then my favorite at the end of the week, freedom of expression. So join us later this week for both. And I'm going to express myself now and say goodbye. 720334 roll. Oh, yeah. Short bus debate club at yahoo.com. See you later. Awesome. Get off my bus, bitch. <laughs>